name's Arabella. I am here on Adobe Live. Thank you guys so much for joining us on another episode of the Weekday Edit. Um, yeah, we are so excited. Well, I'm so excited. You guys, I'm here by myself for the first time. Ellie is out of the office and bless her soul because <laughs> I am like, wow, I get to do the chat. I get to design and all the fun things. So anyway, um, yeah, it's just me today, but uh, I want to encourage all of you to ask questions, um, anything related to stock, anything related to what I'm going to be retouching today. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of get started, you guys. I feel like stock photography is one of those things that, um, you know, uh, it's like, it's one of those things that can be like an additional revenue stream. So, uh, you know, for us, like we do product photography, but really it can, you know, all kinds of photography, you can even do design, like there's so much that you can do with stock and it's awesome. So, um, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about the importance of, uh, you know, diversifying your income, right? Like we're all wanting to kind of have like, you know, you don't want to have your eggs in, in one basket. And so uh, stock is one of those great things for us that we're going to be focusing on this year. So um, yeah, we're really excited. So anyway, just wanted to quickly say hi to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining. I already see a couple of familiar faces uh, or names, I should say. Uh, hi, Robert. Hi, Wade. Hi, Cody. Alejandro. We've got Penny. So much fun. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. Um, you know, for stock, obviously, you know, the one thing that I can say that's definitely necessary is that you want to make sure that there are no brands in your photos. So, you know, sometimes like, you know, you can create new content and new photography and make sure that you're using um, products or props, um, specifically for us in the product photography world, like things that don't have uh, brands, like specific brands on there. Um, that is probably going to be the most like useful to you, most helpful, because then the less retouching you're doing, right? But, you know, I do want to encourage you to all take a look at the past work that you have, because honestly, I can bet you 100% that you are sitting on some work that could easily become uh, stock photography. So for example, I have this benefit image right here. And now one, one key thing actually too, this is what's really important about, um, you know, usage, right? And, and copyright. When you are working with commercial clients, uh, oftentimes we're not giving away our copyright, but we are giving, you know, our, the brands that we're working with a license to use the images. And often it's, you know, a short license anywhere from a year to two years. And we always, um, you know, we kind of decide if we are giving them like an exclusive license or a non-exclusive. This means that if it's a non-exclusive, then uh, we are allowed to use the photos for other things, for our promotional use, for things like stock and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, this is a really old project. I, I think this is like 2020, I'm going to say. So, you know, this image, let's give it some new life, right? Uh, and I have a couple, a few other images too that I have that I want to show you just how easy it can be to kind of have new stock content to upload to whatever stock um, site that you use to, you know, to uh, upload to. Um, so, you know, this image has been sitting in the archives for days, right? But we can use it to kind of uh, give new life to it and honestly make new, make money off of it. So uh, yeah, let's just get it right into it. I feel like this is also like one of those things with stock that um, you want to uh, pick themes that are relevant, right? So I think for sure there's always gonna be a need for, you know, makeup or skincare um, you know, this is a fun balancing shot. Maybe it's like the balancing of, of your routine or, you know, things like that. So you want to kind of think of themes like that um, as you're going through your work. So now I want to show you guys just how easy it is to, um, you know, kind of breathe new life into your old images, right? So I obviously have this PSD and it's, you know, I'm going to do a little copy merge layer here. And I just, you know, did a quick uh, command uh, shift C and then, uh, command paste. So you guys freaking AI is amazing. Like I am just shocked at how easy it is for me to, you know, just speed up my workflow, honestly, because, you know, that's the thing that we want to like, uh, keep in mind with stock is that you want to make sure that you don't have any, you know, any brand, uh, recognition or labels, 
you know, I would even say that certain parts of the product or maybe a like product shape might be something that uh, you can tell it's obvious and it's like, you know, very specific to that brand, you know, maybe stay away from that. Uh, but in this case, there's some things that maybe you can get away with and that's okay. Um, especially for stock when you are uploading, um, you know, as long as there's no like visible name or like things that could be uh, traced back to the brand. But you guys, I'm just using generative fill here and it is just like wild how quickly it does it for me. Like I am just mind blown. So this is just going to make my workflow a lot quicker as far as, you know, removing brand names, right? Anything, any work that you have that you're sitting on, uh, you can, you know, use it for stock if it works. So that's a good starting point. And, you know, I can then continue to work on that. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer actually, and just call it, um, stock cleanup. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, merge this down here. And now I can, you know, do a little bit more retouching to kind of fix up, um, any of those details here. And I'm using the remove tool, great tool. Uh, it does take a little bit of time sometimes with the remove tool. So just be patient, <laughs> maybe, you know, start uh, counting down <laughs> or <laughs> seeing your IBCs. Um, but yeah, so here is just easy way to kind of clean up, you know, brand labels and brand names. And then, you know, there you go. So we've got that one down. I probably could clean up a little bit more of this, but honestly, I am just curious to see how generative fill is going to take care of uh, fixing this one because there's a lot more going on. So um, thank you guys for joining us. Hi, Umacorn. Hi, Oliver. Uh, we are working on editing and retouching for stock photography. Um, let us know in the chat, actually, if you guys are taking advantage of uploading your work to stock um, or if you are interested in doing so. Uh, you know, we have definitely been wanting to focus on it this year. Uh, just because, you know, why not? Uh, you are already probably sitting on some content that could be uh, stock photography. And on top of that, too, like, you know, this year, we're really also focusing on uh, creating personal projects and, you know, just kind of like building, you know, and practicing those. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You guys. Mind blown. Um, so there you go. There's, there's that one. Uh, but yeah. And so for us, like, personal projects are, are time to explore and to have fun, but why not kill two birds with one stone and create, you know, personal projects that can also be stock photography. So for us, you know, that, that might look like coming up with a shoot that's all about, you know, food or that's related to, or maybe we want to think about things that never go out of style, right? You know, there's always going to be a need for, you know, birthday theme shoots or, you know, holiday content, or maybe just like specific colors or specific food. So you kind of just want to like, think about what is needed, you know, and sometimes some stock sites will also share with you like, hey, we're looking for this, right? Maybe, maybe we want like colorful, you know, photography that features, you know, tech, like maybe, you know, your phones or smartphones or that sort of thing or laptops. But you know, there's always like so many ways to um, make stock photography less boring. Let's see, let's say that. So I'm just going around and selecting this, uh, this little lady who looks like she's ready to work. Um, let's hope this generative fill works though. <laughs> I will be so surprised you guys. Um, and I purposely didn't practice this beforehand because I do want to see us troubleshoot and kind of see what happens when we remove this, remove labels and brand things. Okay, always make sure to keep, uh, you know, no, uh, no prompt uh, when you're removing something that's a uh, hot tip. So let's go ahead and remove that. Hi, Barbara, thanks for joining us. You are not late to the party, don't worry. <laughs> we are here retouching for stock photography. Do you guys have any questions, please? Wow, oh my gosh, you guys. That's so good. Like even just to start off with, like now I can like continue to, to remove everything else and I can decide to kind of like continue to uh, like have the, the aqua color just like run down, but that's like a really, really good start. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
um, we can continue to keep going. But one thing that I want to mention actually when retouching and when using AI in general, like if you really get close, I mean, that's something too that with stock photography, like oftentimes you're going to be asked to upload work um, that's really large and high quality, uh, you know, something like six megabytes and maybe the longest edge has to be at least 4,000, like minimum 4,000 pixels, um, you know, things like that. So like you want to make sure that the quality still looks great. And even when I turn off, um, yeah, actually it's looking pretty good, but sometimes, especially when, it, you know, in certain areas of your images, it can be more obvious where uh, you've generative filled something in. Uh, and usually it starts to look fuzzy or like just look a little off. Uh, so something that I like to do is once I'm like pretty happy with the generative fill, you know, with the result or the generation, uh, I usually will go in and add some noise to the, uh, to the generation. So this might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to do like 0.5. So this just kind of like adds that extra bit of noise and grain that is normal you know in your images so otherwise it's you know it'll just kind of blend and have a more seamless look so anyway i'm just going to leave it at that that looks great and i'm going to continue on oops continue on to adding or removing i should say these little lines here because i do kind of want it to be all uh all this aqua color and i can always like blend this out a little bit more as well but the key here is to remove as much of the brand look or brand, you know, uh, like things that are part of that, make it that brand, right? So if someone were to just like look at the, the stripes on here, they might think, okay, this is from Benefit. So we want to like completely reduce that. Wow. Like you guys, this is so good. I'm just, I'm always impressed by uh, generative fill and it's like, it just knows what to do. It's like it's in my head almost. <laughs> so I'm going to keep on generating and keep going with it. Okay, so we've got, and something too to remember is that when you're making selections, you know, the feathering can also work in your favor too. So depending on what it is that you're removing, you know, you can um, select the feather, maybe you want a softer edge and that will also produce different results. So it, it definitely takes into account the feathering. So I'm just gonna keep going. There's a couple little, you know, things that I would probably take care of as well, but I think this is looking good so far. From what we had, I mean, that's pretty good. And I'm just kind of building on top of these, you know, generative fills, because that's the thing. If you are selecting, you want to make sure that you're always on the last generative fill layer that you were on, because, um, you know, if you, if you, for some reason are doing it backwards, you probably won't, um, you know, you'll see like, it just won't match up. So you have to kind of go in order of which way. And then, you know, usually I like to kind of just, once I'm done, I'm finished, I will merge the layers. And there we have our new, you know, fixed, no brand, just generic uh, tube, <laughs> skincare tube. Uh, now I'm gonna just gonna uh, blend this down a little bit or merge this down. And I'm gonna fix a little bit of what's going on here because it does look a little funky. Um, and I, I'm curious to see what happens if I do select everything and use generative fill. I am definitely workshopping this here, you guys. I love like realistic editing on streams, I think, because it always, you know, you get to really see what someone who's a professional or who's a creative, long time creative, what they do <laughs> when, you know, uh, when something goes wrong. So. Uh, you get to see us uh, workshop and, and troubleshoot. <laughs> awesome. Right there, hopefully. Oh, and that's not what I want, but, you know, that's why we try these things, right? So I am going to immediately X out of that, delete. <laughs> and let's just go back to the tools that we know and love, right? So we love our uh, patch tool. We love our stamp tool. I'm going to go ahead and just use the stamp tool to kind of like clean up this, these whole, this whole part right here. I kind of want it to look a little bit more seamless. 
There we go. So I'm bringing this down. And I'm going to be tr try to be a little bit careful here because I don't want to make it look worse. <laughs> And of course, I could always use, you know, like a color fill layer to kind of like add um, to completely take this out. So it just depends on what you choose to do. But that's kind of like a quick and easy way to get that going here. And I might even go back in to, you know, add some grain there. And I'm also gonna add in a new layer here and just kind of soften this whole color here. So I'm just gonna, I'm using the eyedropper tool, just kind of select a color that's in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my brush. I was doing sparkles earlier, so sorry about that. But I'm gonna bring down the opacity to about like, I don't know, maybe 30% or something. And I'm just gonna kind of lightly paint over here. I could make a selection first just so I don't get out of the um out of where the tube is, you know. I might start to affect, but that's why you can always add a layer mask and, you know, kind of remove that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I might bring the opacity down a little bit. Kind of went a little too crazy. That looks pretty good. And then maybe I will just grab the whole thing cuz I do want to keep the grain here. And select that whole tube. You know, obviously you want to make sure that it's as realistic as possible. Uh, so let's go ahead and just kind of feather the selection here. I'm going to do a pixels, five pixels right there. That should be good. And add some noise. So perfect, I think. Or maybe let's try one and see what that looks like. Ah, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to press OK. And there we go. Now we have our fake tube here. I would probably go in and maybe fix this a little bit more because it looks a little a little wonky, but I think that is a great start. And, you know, thankfully, Generative Fill has helped us with that. Uh, now this one is pretty easy. I think this one's just like, you know, with this black, I think it's, it's just, I only need to use the remove tool, I don't think. I don't even think I need to do a whole Generative Fill situation. It's a pretty, sometimes you need certain tools and that's okay you know okay so there we go removing great and that should be a pretty easy cleanup and i might even remove this highlight here too but that looks pretty good so now we've got a brandless photo that can be used for stock i mean this is an easy kind of like fun and creative balancing shot maybe someone would want to use this for you know, like a blog or some kind of article where they're talking about the importance of, you know, using different kinds of skincare products or makeup products that kind of help balance out your whole look or something like that. So that is an easy fix. I've got a couple of other images too that I want to practice and, and figure out if we can get this one because the whole point with stock, right, you want to almost like have a series of images. I think that like the thing with stock is, you know, something that we've learned at least, like even though yes, it can be an additional revenue stream, uh, I think a lot of people think that it might be like exclusively passive income, but it really, it's, it's not. And I say that because with stock, you know, a lot of stock sites really are looking for yes, quality, but also quantity. And it, I think you'll have more of a chance to make money off of it if you just offer, you know, offer more variety in terms of images. And, uh, you know, that could be, that could mean variety in terms of, you know, your ideas, your themes, your shoots, um, or it can be a variety for, you know, the images within one series, like within a series. And so I think that's also important to note um, that, you know, have variety with your images. And that's kind of why I picked this benefit shoot because there's multiple images that I can easily edit um, and, you know, submit to a stock site. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to stock as well, I think you also want to make sure that it's like unique enough, but also maybe the theme is 
you know, um, you know, relevant. Okay, so this is just kind of like a fun, uh, this actually was a GIF, but I just kind of want to see how well it does to remove all of these brand labels. And maybe, you know, some of these shapes might be a little bit too um, close to what, uh, you know, it might remind you of benefit. And so, again, use your best judgment. And, of course, most of the time, stock sites will uh, either accept or deny your images. So it just depends. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this and merge. There we go. And let's take care of cleaning up all these labels, which hopefully with our generative fill, it'll be an easy, an easy thing here. So here we go. Let's just select around and get that out of the way. Perfect. And if you guys are just joining us now, although, by the way, I'm looking over to my left and that's because I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Um, if you're just joining us here, uh, we are here working on, you know, editing for stock, um, you know, definitely take advantage of the work that you've already created and, you know, use that to your advantage. Like, you know, this is, this was created in 2020, I believe. And, you know, it's just been sitting like, yes, it's on our, in, in our portfolio, but maybe we can, you know, uh, make some more money off of it. So, um, that's pretty good. I'm obsessed with that. And I'm just going to keep on going. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and grab the next thing and see if we can get another cl clean uh, edit here. I mean, this is probably one of my favorite things about generative fill is just the, the insane cleanup. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. Like, I love it. Aside from, I would say the generative expand it's it's pretty awesome wow like so good like even the texture even when you go in you can see that it's like like everything just looks like it should like it was always there so it's pretty awesome okay so let's move on to this one and i think all of these are brow pencils so uh they're all pretty skinny i, I do have i think it's easier to remove something when it's on like a very flat you know um like product or, or flat surface or, you know, where the color behind what you want to take out is a solid color. Uh, oh, and actually, let me add back in this little benefit brand here. So there we go. Okay, hit generate, no prompt, and we'll see how that goes. Perfect. Hi, Barbara. Oh, so good. Oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> this is making, I mean, like truly, I think my job has been made so much easier by AI. So honestly, I am loving this life because if I can get to retouching my images faster, then I can get back to doing all the fun creative stuff, which is honestly for me, shooting is like the most fun part, which honestly takes up the least amount, of, you know, it's always the least amount of time in regards to planning the shoot and after and everything, but it's just so much fun. I think being able to kind of work with your hands and, and create stuff. I mean, all of this was, even though this is very digitized and I did go in and add all these, you know, all these digital elements, it was original to, you know, oh, and here we go. Here's some, here's where it starts to kind of be a little weird, right? It's taking information from this top part is what I'm assuming. So I think it's like not really understanding that I just want it to be removed completely. So I'm gonna just hit generate again and see if it will know to remove it. If not, we can go back to our trusty old tools. They're not old, they're uh, they're grandfather tools. <laughs> okay, yeah, so see, it's kind of like still doing the same thing. So that's okay, I can just leave that there and we'll take care of it in a second. But yeah, guys, so like this is, you know, um, I love working with like, you know, shooting things visually. So we have like all these, um, uh, these stars and everything, all of that was digitized. And, you know, um, you can tell I, if I take back the layers, you'll be able to see it, but I'm like, I don't even want to touch where anything is right now because I will get confused. So, um, let's go back to our last, uh, little gimme brow here. So I'm going to 
take this benefit out and make sure that these stars are out as well. And the skinny brow plus. Amazing. Yay. Perfect. There you go. So much easier. I mean, this stuff would have taken me so much longer if I were to do it with all the other tools that I normally do. But man, like it really just makes it so much more simple and we love it. Okay. Awesome. So, I mean, I think we can work with this. We can work with it. Let me see. If I turn this off, I'm trying to see where things are. Okay. So maybe this one might be our best bet. Yeah, I think so. So I'll just go ahead and go back in and remove these extra things here. I want to keep that. Perfect. So another little generative fill and we are good to go. Okay, while we wait for that, I'll take a look at the chat. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them in. Um, you know, we're all, we're all here to learn. So I, you know, we're open books. So whatever uh, questions you might have, I'm here to answer. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. That's looking pretty good. I mean, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think that works. Maybe that one. I don't know. We can kind of decide. But for now, I do want to kind of fix this second one right here that's in here. But I'm going to just go ahead and merge these layers so that they're all in one. And now I can just work to add and or remove this little section right here. That generative fill was not doing what I wanted it to do. And that's okay. It happens. Um, but, you know. Sometimes you got to work with a couple different things. Okay. So there we go. And now I'm happy with that. So I'll just go ahead and merge that down to our stock copy. And I'll fix that little guy. There we go. And I can go in and fix any other details. But there you have it. Now you have a clean, you know, no brand labels uh, image here. So that's great. Now, I did want to bring this one up. Um, I'm going to bring the JPEG just so that you guys can see. Um, so here's probably an example of one where I would maybe it would be difficult to, you know, include this one as stock. I feel like Benefit's known for their bronzers and their, you know, their makeup products. So you have to be really careful about what you choose to, you know, upload to stock. This might be pushing it, um, you know, and maybe, maybe you use generative fill to kind of remove it or do something different um, but you want to be sure to kind of remove as much as possible even like in you know like imprints on like the bronzer or like anything like that anything that can you know refer back to the brand so all right so I I'm okay with that but now I do want to talk a little bit about another project that we also this was shot so long ago um let me go ahead and close these out um and yeah, so stock doesn't only have to be, you know, lifestyle photography or products or things like that. It can, you can create stock for mock-ups. Like there are so many people and so many graphic designers out there that need stock imagery to kind of place their brands on, you know, on beautiful images, right? So in this case, uh, I have this project that we did with um you know it was a personal project that we shot and we love these voicemails candles um if you're a fan of voicemails uh definitely let us know um oh morali you have a question i missed the beginning so sorry if you already answered this question are your clients usually okay with this use of their pictures i never even considered this possibility yes so we definitely you know it's it's kind of like a a fine line right i probably we probably wouldn't um you know upload to stock any current projects right especially ones especially ones that you have literally signed a contract on and you know have given usage to your brand um, to your client for a specific amount of time so i would not i probably wouldn't do anything recent unless unless you signed a contract and 
um, only uh, offered the client a non-exclusive uh, license. So when it's non-exclusive, it just means that, you know, you are allowed to use the images in other ways. Do we? Mm, it's like a case by case basis. For example, we just shot with this new, with this client last year. Um, I think it was last year or the year before. We it was like a really cool skincare, um, you know, brand, and we shot with models. And so some of the shots didn't even include like their actual product, like bottle. It just included like swatches and the model's face and things like that. Where we're like, oh my god, these images would actually be really great for stock, you know, for like beauty and, you know, um, you know, there was diversity in the models that we chose or that they chose. And so, uh, you know, and they were a new brand. So for us, we were like, you know what, this probably isn't the right time to upload it just out of like, you know, w us wanting to, um, be on good terms with our client and, you know, not making the, not make them upset for uploading our stock, even though we did have like a non-exclusive license with them still, you know, it's a case by case basis. But, um, what I mean to say is that for any old work, right. I mean, this was like 2019, 2020, so these images, and this was a personal project as well. So, you know, just, but with clients, I feel like, if it's old enough, they're likely not using it unless it's, you know, maybe like something that's still on their site or something. But oftentimes, like, you know, if if the license is already expired, or like usage is already expired, then that's your image. You took that. You own the copyright to those images. So you should, you know, make money off of the images that you've used uh, or that you've taken, especially the ones that, you know, like you could breathe new life into and make money off of. So anyway. Uh, long story short, you definitely can. It just depends, right? It just like time wise and when, um, you know, you signed your contract and um, offered a license. So hopefully that answered your question, Maroli. Thank you for, for asking that. Any other questions, definitely drop them in. Uh, but yeah, so like I was saying, with uh, a lot of graphic designers need, you know, cool like mock-up images. So in this case, like this is such an easy uh, fix. I mean, I can do generative fill, I can do remove, but I just, I love a good generative fill situation. Um, and in this case, this image has already been edited. So I, I'm just going to, you know, um, generative fill off of like the final edited image. Um, obviously if you can use, you know, go back into your actual Photoshop files and do it that way. Cause then, you know, then you can export to really large sizes. Uh, Morali says, so cool. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you for, um, asking. Wow, I am <laughs> I'm so confused by this. <laughs> Maybe we should have used our remove tool. Sometimes generative fill does some weird funky things. So let's just uh, exit out of that. Hard, hard pass. <laughs> uh, and let's go ahead and, um, and actually before I even do that, let's go ahead and make a copy of this or duplicate it. Um, so I'm just gonna do a command J and call it stop. So, Let's uh, use our remove tool here. This is so easy too. I mean, it's like, ugh, I mean, so quick. And actually I meant to do something differently here. Let me cancel that. With the remove tool, all you really have to do is just complete the uh, selection that you're making by, you know, finishing where you started and it'll automatically fill in the rest of the image. So. That's a, that's a great tip. Otherwise you're going to be like scribbling over and over again, but see, that's super perfect. Like amazing. Uh, and let's go ahead and remove this one as well. Making a big circle here, but that's like such an easy way to, you know, a lot of, yeah, a lot of designers need stock, cool stock for mock-ups. So that is such an easy way to, you know, to create stock content. So I am curious though, what would happen if I selected this whole label just to remove it uh, if generative fill knows what I wanted to do. So let's just see. All right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Cody, you are absolutely right. The candle does say boy smells. <laughs> Um, and Umicorn, if you haven't uploaded anything to stock, that's okay. You can start now or you can, you know, create new content for it. I mean, there's never, you know, 
it's never going to be a right time. Just kind of get going and you'll be surprised, um, you know, at like how it can become an additional, you know, income stream. So, okay. I mean, that's not terrible. Uh, that's, that's really not that bad, actually. Like we could work with this. Um, and then I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see if we, if we did this too. But yeah, I don't, I actually don't know the, um, the reason why their candles are called voicemails. Uh, I know they have like some certain scents that are very like boyish, but, uh, yeah, it's just like a fun name. I don't know. <laughs> okay. That's, that's not bad. Actually. I will say that the texture, we lose some of the texture here. Um, you can tell that obviously, you know, the quality of the generative of the generation, uh, is, you know, fuzzy and looks awkward. So that's definitely something that maybe, you know, we might end up, you know, doing some like stamping instead, maybe, but honestly, it's a, it's a start and that looks great. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's one. Let's, let's take care of some of these other ones too. These are all images that like we've had in our, you know, in our drives and they're just sitting and yes, they're on our site and our portfolio, but I mean, like, why not, you know, why not use them for stock? <laughs> Honestly. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab the, oh, and actually, you know what? I meant to do a remove tool because we saw what happened with the other image and I don't know if we want to do that. <laughs> I mean, it, it might do something weird. So <laughs> we will see. Yeah. See, okay. I don't know what's going on. These are so, okay. There we go. <gasps> Good job, Jennifer Phil. Oh my gosh. That was perfect. I'm obsessed. Okay. Perfect. So we're basically at the end of it. Uh, I want to kind of just jump into another project, but those are just some examples of how you can kind of like look back at your work and see what you can, you know, find that might work for stock. You, you'll never know. You like, these, I actually literally just looked them up before the stream because I was like, you know what, what, let me see if there's anything else that I could, that we could put into stock. So, uh, you know, that's, yeah. But you guys, if you're wanting to create new content for stock, definitely, you know, use the time that you want to, um, you know, invest in for like personal projects, you know, things that you really enjoy and love. Uh, and, you know, like kind of kill two birds with one stone is like kind of what I was saying earlier, which like, you know, you can make a personal project that can also be for stock. So in this case, you guys, so funny, actually, I, I think I took, I think I drank too much coffee before the stream. Cause I am like jittery and just like so much action, but it's funny that I have this mushroom shoot that we did. It was a personal project because I've been trying to not drink as much coffee. So I've been drinking mushroom coffee. I don't know if you guys uh, are into that, but yeah, for some reason today I was like, you know what? I have a stream today. I should just drink regular coffee. And no, that's probably <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> so it's funny that I have this little mushroom shoot that we're doing, but anyway, all aside, um, thank you, Cody. Your photo shoots are so beautiful. I thank you so much. Um, you know, Ellie and I really love to shoot really fun random things so <laughs> uh so here we are with these like fun mushrooms like we just thought the shapes were so cool and we were like kind of trying different things different compositions um and getting really up close we used uh i believe we used a 100 millimeter for this shoot uh so that's how we were able to get some of these macro shots especially these kind of texture like how beautiful how crazy is it that this is a mushroom like what are all like these look like pages in a book, you know, like I'm just, I'm shocked. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, mushroom coffee, umicorn. It's really great for you. Um, did not have that today because I drink regular coffee and that's why I'm talking a million miles a minute or whatever, however that phrase goes. Um, uh, but yeah. So anyway, we have this shoot and we're like, okay, what can we like upload for stock? Or what kind of shoot do we want to create that's going to be really great for stock? And we immediately went to food because obviously food is just king and all of us eat it. And so we were like, okay, what's something, what's one food item that we can focus on that we can just create a whole entire shoot and have a lot of variety for stock, right? So 
we went to mushrooms because we're like, wow, they're like, they've got a cool shape. Um, you know, we can like create different compositions and there's always like, di there's different shapes to all of the mushrooms too. So, you know, we're just like, let's, let's go for it. So that's why we have this. Um, Ooh, we've got some questions. Jessica Torres, hi, Arabella. As far as the difference for exclusive and non-exclusive, does you, do you include verbiage for those differences in your contract templates? Ooh, that's a great question, actually. Um, I might have to get back to you on that because Ellie is our shop master and she's the one who knows everything that's in it. That is a great question. I believe we might have it in there because, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Uh, but it's as simple as just kind of like, you know, either working with a lawyer or hiring somebody to kind of either add that if it's not already in there. But let, send me a DM uh, on Instagram at Weekend Creative and I will make sure to find out for you. Um, Oliver says, haven't tried mushroom coffee, but I do have mushroom tea. Ooh, that's actually a good one. I have never tried mushroom tea, but mushroom coffee is really good, you guys. I love it. Um, so... Anyways, uh, we've got a couple of other little questions here. How do those mushroom coffee alternatives taste feel? Okay, um, I love I sh how I should be talking about editing, but you know, I guess mushroom is just a hot topic. But um, I really like mushroom coffee. It tastes kind of nutty, kind of like, you know, and there is obviously like a slight earthy feel to it. But honestly, the one that I take, it's called, um, I think it's called Everyday Dose. Um, honestly, I should do, we should do what a a personal project of every uh, everyday dose uh their packaging their brand is very fun and psychedelic and super cool uh anyway i do really like it i do think uh it tastes really good for mushroom coffee i think i've heard kind of like you know i've heard previous like previously like mushroom coffee wasn't that good but i do think that uh some brands are working on making the taste better so i really like everyday dose but anyway that's that's that um, Instagram wants you to buy them so badly. <laughs> well, I definitely recommend it. I mean, I, I feel like it's probably healthier than regular coffee because, you know, nobody wants to be, you know, super, uh, addicted to coffee, but you know, um, those black lines underneath mean poisonous, right? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Uh, maybe in the chat, someone else knows. Um, and then how do you make, thank you, Brian Selby for all the questions. We love it. How do you make sure these super bright colors don't bounce and discolor your subjects? Oh, that is a great question. I, you know what, I, sometimes for us personally, and by the way, I have Lightroom here open already because, you know, gotta fix these colors because they're looking very washed out. Uh, but as far as coloring your subjects, it really depends. Some, like we really like when color is on our subjects. It depends, right? Uh, but I think, you know, if that, if that, if that's your concern, I would then just shoot on some kind of like white or gray background, gray background, actually, probably something like this, because then, um, then you can apply a color in Photoshop in post. And that way you can make sure that, you know, no there's no color cast on your products but honestly we're just like color gals so like we're just all about it so I think it's a, it comes down to a personal preference um so I'm just gonna copy these settings because I want to make sure that all these images are the color they should be because right now they're looking a little crazy so I just did like a right click copy paste and now our colors look way more like how they should be look at that it's crazy Fixed it right away. Um, color gal, that's right. <laughs> we are color gals. We're we're so into it. Um, hi Sean, thank you so much for joining. Um, Penny uh, Doodles, I love that last that last name, Penny Doodles. Um, and Penny says I've tried Rise and Four Sigmatic. They are decent, so we'll check that brand out. Yeah, I I don't know. I just found Everyday Dose. I, I mean, clearly the ads were working because they targeted me and I ended up buying it. So, you know, that's, that's that. But anyway, so let's just get into this mushroom, you know, shoot, because we've got a lot to, we've got a lot of variety here, right? So we, this is kind of what I was t talking about and mentioning earlier is that you want to have different options for stock, right? So this is a whole mushroom series and we've got, you know, 
further back and you know obviously like it's important that you have you know different angles and different looks and really kind of build out the story of this one mushroom so it's just like a mushroom study basically and obviously mushrooms seem to be all the rage these days so this seems like the right kind of content for stock for maybe a blog that's a health and wellness and maybe it's like talking about you know like how healthy mushrooms are or how healthy you know you like ways to incorporate mushrooms things like that so you kind of want to like think about where your images will live and kind of base your ideas and shoots off of that right and there's always going to be need a need for content around food around you know tech around beauty around you know like so just think about all these kind of like evergreen themes and ideas but anyway let's just get right into it um i mean they, all of these images are looking like really beautiful already i could technically edit these all in lightroom and be happy probably <laughs> but uh let's go ahead and just let me see i don't even know which one to edit really they're all so cool maybe i'll do this one so let's just go ahead and fix this a up a little bit i do want to up the exposure bring down the highlights just a tad bring up those shadows and i do want to give it some texture um let's see what clarity does oh wow so if we were going for maybe like a dreamy ethereal look we can definitely play around with the clarity um so that's another thing too depending on what stock sites you end up um you know being on like some stock sites might uh be very generic and just kind of like simple and you just do that there are other stock sites that are more artistic and kind of value you know a certain style maybe your personal style and your personal editing style on your images so that's totally an option um so you know you kind of just think about like where you want to go and something to also take note of is um there are going to be some stock sites that want you to be exclusively most of them actually probably are exclusively with them so instead of like you're uploading to like multiple they'll probably want you to kind of only upload to them and that's you know because they're the ones who they're they're the ones who want to host you basically so it just depends um you know so kind of do your research and just check out what's out there and see what's best for you really um and there are some sites too that will do all of the like titles and the keywords because you know that part is also very important right you want to make sure that your image is discoverable uh and so you know if i were to be uploading this exact image obviously i would go you know mushroom mushroom texture mushroom macro um and then maybe like i'd probably have to do some re research and figure out the names of these mushrooms to, to include them yellow background yellow cream color you know so it's like you have to like really um uh know what kind of keywords to make your image as discoverable as possible um and you know consider other things not just like what's physical but maybe like you know uh mushroom wellness mushroom uh foods mushroom things like that so anyway uh i digress <laughs> um <laughs> oliver says girl uh gills normally mean edible whereas poisonous mushrooms normally have light gills but it's not a hundred percent guarantee thank you for that uh for that fact uh, yeah, I'm very clueless when it comes to mushrooms, but I do know about lion's mane and reishi and ashwagandha. So, you know, the key ones, <laughs> but these are not it for sure. <laughs> uh, Ryan Selby says, and yeah, I will never forage my own mushrooms for this exact reason. Yeah, you want to be careful because there's some, there's some out there that will uh, make you start, you know, seeing some things. So, <laughs> um, and there's deadly ones. So yeah, there you have it. Okay. So I honestly, like I'm kind of into the like soft dreamy look is that kind of a thing I don't know we're like I'm like kind of into it so um let me just go ahead and up this vibrance we might only get to editing this one image and that's okay um but oh one of the cool things that I do want to show you guys about Lightroom uh is this point color uh it's so cool it just like really makes things a little bit more uh you just like, have to, a lot more control over what you want to affect. So in this case, I've picked this color and I can start moving, uh, you know, this little 
circle here around. Basically, if you notice, and you can see it on the right side. So if I go down, I'm affecting the saturation. If I go from right to left, I'm affecting the hue and shift. And then if I go on the right hand side, I am affecting the luminance. So that's something to keep in mind. Obviously you have the, the sliders here too, and that works just the same, but it's kind of nice. I don't know, for me as a creative visual, like I love this little, you know, moving around back and forth. Um, so anyway, that's one way. Uh, but let's say, for example, oops, cancel. Let's say, uh, let's say you want to just affect the background layer, right? So maybe I want to go into the masks and I am going to go ahead and do background. Let's see how well it detects the background. Um, okay, it did okay, not too terrible, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I do wanna be a little bit more um, specific. So let's just go ahead and do an object mask and uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and select everything of this background here. I think because, and here's, Ryan, this is where for you, like, you know, maybe not shooting on a color where, the, you know, there's going to be a lot of color cast might be like a little bit of annoying, but, um, you know, I, that's pretty good. I can always remove this actually. So maybe I'll just go ahead and um, remove. And I'm just going in and removing with that object. There we go. Perfect. I mean, that's pretty good. And doing another one. And so I'm just clicking this little minus button on that mask and selecting objects. And that way it kind of like analyzes what I want not to be part of that mask. Perfect. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Um, so there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this time and do the bottom. Okay. Perfect. It's looking good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do, let's do with that. Um, I'm going to actually grab that little bit right here. This is very fast and clunky, you guys. I'm so sorry. But I just want to show you how cool it is. Okay. There we go. So you can kind of tell where the color cast is happening, which like, you know, that's fine. Um, in this case, I'm probably not going to change the, the yellow background that much, really. Um, maybe not at all. But I just want to show you guys how cool it is to um, be able to just affect one thing and only one thing. So in this case, I have this mask, right? It's I'm, I have it selected and now I can go down again to point color, select the color. And now I can only affect what I've selected. So that's a real nice little trick tip for just affecting what you want to affect. Obviously, if you've got very contrasting backgrounds and products or uh, whatever it is in your scene, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, to do that, but that's a really easy way to kind of uh, mess with that. So anyway, I will delete that, all that hard work. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go back down and kind of mess with that yellow color a little bit. Maybe I want it to be a little less, maybe something like that. Do I want it more orange? Ooh, maybe a little more orange. That looks kind of good. Okay. So I'm going to add some grain and I think like we're pretty much there. I mean, you know, we just, we, we want this to be an easy like thing um, because with stock, you know, you want to kind of constantly be um, adding to your gallery or to your, you know, your page because the more eyes you have on your images, the more, you know, the more you might make more money basically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there we go. We've added some green and I think that's kind of like our, our vibe here. Now, if I wanted to, I could really just copy paste, um, you know, all these settings. So develop settings, copy, and then I can apply them to the rest of our images. And then how easy was that to create a literal series of, you know, mushroom images that I can now upload to stock. So, 
Uh, you guys, thank you so much for joining us on the weekday edit for this uh, amazing stream. Um, I know we've got another fun stream later in the day with James Bernard at 5 p.m. He's going to go over shortcuts, actions, and efficiency. But thank you guys so much for joining, and we will see you next time. Bye!